so I can't call you just to tell you I'm fine. So this show, well, I'm across the globe. Gotta take it well. I wanna convince myself that just this is it. And that's just the way it feels. Oh, no, no, no. I right, look, man, let me show you. Um, I got a topic for you today. 30 seconds just passed. Anyway, 30 seconds just passed. I see this a cloudiness. Today's weather over here is kind of like chilly. I'm walking into the cold right now. Now, I mean, it was warm a few steps ago. Now I'm walking into the cold. So, anyway, now I want to show you. Uh, I have a topic to talk about. I had other topics to talk about, but I feel like this is something I have to address. And the definition, that's not going to be the topic, but I just wanted to read the definition out real quick. And the definition is called hypocrite. You feel me? Now I'm going to read the meaning of what a hypocrite is. And from what I've read myself, it seems like we are all hypocrites and we keep, we, we sort of like jump in and out of hypocrisy without even knowing. But a pra- hypocrite, the meaning of hypocrite, it's called a practice of claiming to have moral standards. Hold on. Come back. <laughs> the practice of claiming to have moral standards or belief to which one's own behavior does not confirm or pretends. You feel me? An example of hypocrite is a person who says they care about the environment, but consistently literally. A person who pretends to be what he or she is not, Specifically, one who pretends to be vigorous without really being so, or righteous without being so. So, I mean, we can, like I, I previously pointed out about the, um, about the Capitol Hill thing that happened, about the looting when uh, people were just breaking into stores. I said, it, I said it myself when I said that these were fathers, uncles. These were uh, people that went to church maybe every Sunday or every other Sunday. These were good people, good family members. But sometimes, you know, you claim to be something that events occur and you jump in and out of this hypocrisy. You feel me? So I just wanted to point out that I'm not mad at you for being a hypocrite. That sometimes we know some of us unknowingly are hypocrites without even knowing. Hypocrites, hypocrites profess to have a certain moral standard, but in but in practice ignores those moral norms. So unknowingly, you cannot become a hypocrite. Knowingly, you will become a hypocrite. You feel me? If you intentionally do something like, you know, the Capitol Hill and everything else, most of the people who participate or support it from far are hypocrites. Now, it's not, not my intentions. It's not for me to speak about the hypocrites or to speak about anybody else. I'm about to speak about myself, you feel me? About the things that have been going on in my life and the reason why people are talking, you feel me, out the side of the mouth and stuff like that. You feel me? I was, I've been here for, by the way, um, I'm still on the road. The boy's still having smoke or anything else like that. So I pat myself on the back. Congratulations to me. Now, back to the story. <laughs> you know how that go. Anyway, look, man. Now, I was, I just been in California for six months now, right? Going on seventh month. Ooh. <laughs> that was a year. That's crazy. Shout out to the coronavirus. Coronavirus has been around for a year now. I think today made it a year. I really started counting since January. So, I thought it was a year and a couple of months, but I made a mistake. Today makes it a year. Officially, of course, when it was recognized that it was too dangerous. But we all know that coronavirus came in, came into uh, the United States long before that. Honestly, let's be for real. Before the officials decided to let our president know and everything else like that. Officially. But now let me get back to my story. Now, the reason why I started with the word hypocrite because I wanted to paint a picture of how, hypocrite, how, how hypocritical people are when it comes to me and the topics that they, they try to brew up. You feel me? 
I've only been in California for six to seven months. Let's say seven months just to make ourselves feel good. And in seven months, I have not seen or faced anything that I have never seen before or faced before. Let me let that shit sink in. You feel me? Because a lot of these niggas is hypocrites. And I just want to paint a picture for y'all. You dig? The things that I'm going through right now, it might be a shock to the people. It might be a shock to people who have never heard of this before. You feel me? Just saying, it might be a shock. The things that I'm going through, the quote unquote, everything that you can think of, everything, you name it, everything, me being attacked in my sleep somehow, some way, my food, um, um, the job thing, um, the harassment, abuse, you know. The targeting, stalking, you name it. Everything that I've been going through. Harassment, you name it. What else? The insult, the disrespect. Everything that I'm going through. I have not... It's nothing that I'm going through in California that I haven't went through when I was in New York City for all them years. You feel me? Now, the problem becomes that it's the people that is doing it. Now that the, there is um, a different race of group that's doing this, everybody has a problem with it. But when my own people and other people like the Hispanic people was doing it and other cultures was doing it, it was never a problem, right? But now that, I guess, they got some skinny white boys, some white people doing it, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, you got to stick to the devil that you know, the things that they, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, I, I got to address this shit right here. How do you, how do these people from a whole nother coast, right, have all this information about me? It's because y'all told them, you feel me? It's, that's why I said I got to go through the, uh, let me go through the memory lane itself so I can tell you how the story of how it started and everything else like that. Because these people don't even know me from a hole in the wall. But at the same time, they advertise this sort of behavior so well that they know every little detail that they need to know to construct some kind of hate towards me. And they're doing the same thing. Like I said, I've not, I have not faced anything new since I came here. I've seen these things before. I've seen this movie already. You feel me? So when these people start talking about, uh, you, I can't believe that you, have, uh, you left New York City to come into this. And I'm like, hey, what the fuck y'all niggas talking about? I was going through the same thing in New York City for 10 years straight. The fuck y'all niggas talking about? You feel me? The hypocrites of it all. Oh, how can you leave your family and this, that, and the third? I'm like, yo, I have not been going through nothing new. Like, what the fuck are y'all talking about, bro? Like, do you know what it feels like? Like, I said, let me just go through the memory lane for y'all. So y'all can understand what's going on. So people can just leave me alone and know that I am really, like, moving forward. And I don't give a fuck. Because you just started hearing this story and you just came into my life. You think you know it all. So I just got to let y'all niggas know. You feel me? I got to let the truth be told. Let it be known. You feel me? This shit been going on way longer before I even came into Amazon. It was going on before I even knew it was going on. You feel me? You feel me? It was going on before I even knew it was going on. Niggas got to understand that, you dig? Like, I can't even start at the beginning of when it was going on. I can't. But I remember when I, I lived in, uh, before then, shit, nigga, even before that. I remember once upon a time when I, um, when I moved out of my mom's crib and I started living in Harlem. I had my own apartment in Harlem. You feel me? 149th and Brighthurst. Shout out to Harlem. You feel me? I used to live on 149th and Brighthurst. You know what I mean? That's where Big L was. Big L used to live at. You feel me? So I was very proud to have an apartment out there. And at that time, Shorty, um, my quote unquote girlfriend at that time was living with me. You feel me? That I remember just living in that area and everything else like that. And around that time, I was sleeping with the enemy without even knowing. You feel me? I'm not saying that's when it started. It could have been before that. Who knows? You feel me? Before that, I was living with my mom and them. Feel me? It wasn't. I guess as time gradually went on, 
feel me? When an enemy put, put some stake out on you and he just can't figure you out and you don't even know who is who and you just naively among people who wants to do you dirty, you feel me? Naively, man, I swear I didn't know. It would have been ignorant of me if I, did. I just needed to know. Feel me? That's why I did saying things just to make sure that I knew. Anyway, let me get back to the story. Feel me? At that time, yeah, I was living in that area that I, things didn't work out. I realized the same behavior was coming up. I didn't like what I was seeing. You feel me? You know what I mean? Once upon, when you're doing good, everything is all good. But when things start to go down, people start to change and everything else like that. So I had to make changes. Bam. When that happened, I started get, I got my own place and started living with some people. Then this, that, and the third. Let's start from, um, but I'm just giving you a journey that I was moving from place to place already. So I was already a person that was living on my own already. Occasionally, yeah, I went back to my mom's crib and everything. I only went back twice, honestly. <laughs> did I? Yeah, I went back twice. Because after, yeah, I did go back twice. Because when I went back home one time, then... It's like, you know, when you when you used to being on your own for a very long time and you go back home, you got to get reintroduced into, I can't even remember the first time I went back home. Because it's been so, so long, I ain't going to lie to you. But when I went back home, right? The first time when I went, the first time after the apartment thing from 149th and Bradhurst, and those things didn't work out between me and Shorty, and I had to just, you know, get away from her and everything else like that. Of course, I met another Shorty. It's always like that. I had, um, I happened to have my own place again. Me and her was interacting. She had her own place, but you know how that shit go. Sometimes when I have a when I have a girlfriend, I always keep her close to me like glue. She got it. <laughs> she every girl I have is like it seems like I'm living with them, but I'm really not. They have their own place or they live with their parents, but it seems like we always together type shit like that. It's like we for a long period of time until things don't work out. Maybe we need to give each other some break. The next one, I know now not to keep the pussy so close. You feel me? Because when I start getting it, I want it all the time. That's my problem. Anyway, look, man. So when I left 149 from Bradhurst, I had my, I had, I had moved out. I had my own place. I had this other shorty. <coughs> she was, um, she was Spanish, whatever. Da -da -da. So we did our own thing da -da -da, for a long period of time. Then um, when I was living on my own, I met my uncle out of nowhere. Then my uncle was telling me like, um, this director, I think you should go home. Da -da -da. And I'm like, all right, fuck it, let me just go home. So that's when I moved back with my moms and everything else like that. Then things didn't work out. So I would end up moving back out again. And I went to Soundview in the center Bronx. I was supposedly living with my mans and them. <clears throat> From there, things didn't work out on that side too. I can't even lie to you. I, I'm, mind you, I'm only mentioning these events because I'm going through these things not even knowing what is taking place. I'm, th I'm like, damn, like, you feel me? These things was happening to me without even knowing what was going on. It happened way, it ha it's happening from the time when I started from one, 149th. At least that's when I can, I didn't know it was going on, but looking back, it started to make sense that it happened during that time. So when I moved in from, when I moved into Soundview, the Bronx, and I was living in Soundview and everything else, you can feel the vibe and everything else like that. People were just treating you different. I even had this lady call me the devil in some form of fashion. The devil is a lie. And this, I'm like, damn, what the fuck is going on? I didn't know what was going on. But yet, the people who are spreading these rumors will smile in your face. Oh, let this shit be. I hate when niggas is so nosy. Like, you don't even know me, bro. You know me? They just don't even know. Like, let's look at us. There's nothing in front of him, neither. Nothing, like, just keep going. So you ain't got to make no noise. I'm telling my story now, because I'm in California. Niggas don't know. They don't know. They only heard what they've heard. You don't know me from a hole in the wall. I don't care what you read in the documents. You still don't know. The people who are telling you don't even like me. So what makes you... They're competing against me secretly in the dark. So what makes you think that they would degrade themselves in any form of fashion? You feel me? I feel like Kobe sometimes. When Kobe, when Kobe was here... 
people didn't bring up his allegation of rape. But when Kobe left, then they wanted to dig up all these things. That's how, well, that's what coward people do. When I was in New York City, niggas didn't bring none, none of that stuff up. You feel me? When I was around them, they didn't bring none of these stuff up. But as soon as you leave, then all these kind of... It's crazy. Like That's what I call a hypocrite. You feel me? A person who acts one way in front of you, but behind your back does not behave the same way. So I leave New York now. I'm in the West Coast. You hear all these stories. And it's coming, it's coming up in fragments because people don't really tell me. So I'm trying to piece it together. So I'm just going to tell my side of the story instead of trying to piece the whole truth together. I'm just telling my side of the story. So basically, I moved, I moved in with my friends on 149th and Bradhurst. I mean, from 149th and Bradhurst, which is in Harlem, I moved to, I was moving around here, 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 there, here, there. Then I went back to my mom's script, bomb, because my uncle told me, Da, da, da. Yo, I think you should move back on. I, I met him out of nowhere. I just ran into him. <laughs> and at that time, when I had my own place, I guess the same thing was going on. So, I didn't, of course I didn't know. Unknowingly, because God has been guiding me. When you walk in the presence of God, it doesn't matter who's against you. You know what I mean? You're free in your approach. Like, niggas can't approach me and say anything to me or crazy. Because they know I would defend, I'll be forced to defend myself. So they got to do that shit behind my back. And that's the case for a very, very long time. So let's not get it twisted. That's why niggas, they want to talk now. Because I'm, I, come on, man. It was never even that kind of energy between me and them or anybody else. Everybody that sees me showed me some kind of love or respect. And if you don't, just don't talk to me. You feel me? And that's just the truth of the matter. It's none of that stuff that they're talking about. You feel me? I don't know what, where that energy is coming from. You feel me? <laughs> Anyway, I moved in with my mans in them and Soundview. That's in the projects, you feel me? After I left my mom's crib that I, I moved in with them. I was paying my rent and everything else like that. They can't they can even avouch to that. I, yeah, of course, at times, it was like, yo, we need you to, or nah, I mean, at times I couldn't even own up to my own side of the rent. I can't even lie on that part. But at the same time, I was paying my shit. I caught up in paying my shit. So we had an agreement and I called up, I started paying my shit. In the beginning, yeah, I had to get used to it. But once I got used to it, I caught up in paying my shit. Bum. That being said, long story short, that uh these people, I'm paying my side of uh my side of it. I know they're gonna lie, as always. I don't give a fuck with you, man, nigga. Fuck you. But the truth of the matter is we got evicted. Well, it was very shady of them, to tell the truth. <clears throat> they had a letter telling them that they go get evicted, but it was hidden from me. You feel me? So, long story. I'm taking a shower, and all of a sudden, the lady, a lady came to the door, bam, 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 banging on the door. Da, da, da. He said, "It's eviction. Da, da, you gotta go." And I'm like, "What the fuck? Nobody ever gave me an update on that." So it was that was very shocking to me. You feel me? Like imagine that. Imagine. You taking a shower, you getting ready to go to work, right? This is how I fucked up. This was my situation. I'm living with people that I knew since we was young. I'm talking about young. We don't fuck the same bitches. We don't run train on the same bitches. We, just, nigga, we did shit together, bro. Like, you feel me? That was, like, supposedly my niggas. You feel me? My, I was going through problems with my parents and everything else. And these niggas came and help me out of my, my situation is like, yo, you feel me? They got my clothes and everything else like that. It's like, yo, we, let's go. You feel me? That's the round. I was going through problems with my mom. My mom wanted to, me and my mom just wasn't, we just was not seeing eye to eye. She wanted to call the cops and everything else like that. It's a long story. She might say it's a lie, but I called my dad and everything else. He might probably not uh, remember that. So we was going through real problems, you feel me? But I'm not here to shame anybody. So if she said I'm lying, then I'm lying. <laughs> I let this car pass because I know this fool. Oh, I don't know them. I thought it was somebody I knew. Anyway, so if she said I'm lying, then I'm lying. All right, look, man. So this is what happened. You did? So this is, this is, this is exactly what happened. So... Basically, I'm in the shower, taking a shower, and they came in. Mind you, I was paying my rent and everything else. They was just pocketing that shit, and they wasn't paying it. So, come to find out, they have back, back rent that they own. Now, I know I told this story before, and um, 
come to find out that same nigga has been competing with me for a long time. He's mad about shit that happened when we was young and shit. Like dumb little kid shit that he hasn't uh, I overgrown at that time. You feel me? Niggas get mad about the pettiest shit about you fucking some bitch and the bitch talk, talking about you got a little dick and stuff like that. Like who cares at that age? What does that girl know at that age what a big dick and a little dick is? Like, you feel me? It's like sometimes it's very confusing for a little girl, but you took it and and you let that shape you into you being a grown ass man. And it's like, yo, you gotta let that shit go, my G. So all that fake love you've been showing, it's like, it kills me to this day. I'm like, damn, this nigga really competing with niggas secretly because he wants to, because cause of what some other little girl said and we all laughed in that moment. Ha, 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 ha. And we were just, you know, we were just in acting. We was all young. We were just acting how the girl said he was doing it and how other people seen it. Because when we were in training on bitches, it's like people wasn't, we was, we was just trying to, prove to each others, like, you know, men, like, when I say run trains on bitches, like, it's like, it'd be like, I say, if it was 10 of us, it's probably like nine girls, like, we all had our own different little girl, but we was all in the same room having sex with them, so everybody's trying to put on a display, you feel me, manly, you know, some shit that we used to do back in the day, nowadays, it's kind of shaky. You look at a girl wrong or smile at a girl too much, they call it a sexual harassment. So this is just a different world now. To me, to even speak about this situation, it's probably some form of criminality. You feel me? Shit crazy. Crazy. Like, they they, they got these bitches all confused. All right, let's just hope. They got these girls all confused. So this, this, is, what I'm, I'm, so this is what I'm going to talk about. You feel me? So, I'm just giving you a rundown of the reason why, just giving you a rundown of the story so we can get back to where we need to get to. And remember, I started the topic of people being hypocrites. And let's just call them for what they are. They are hypocrites. You feel me? So, so when I said, so basically, he is mad about the situation because he was laughing at him because he, he was trying to hide his shit because he was basically, like, you feel me? Some, I can't even display it because it, it seems like I'll be making fun of the nigga. But... I guess he was holding that grudge against me all that time, so he wanted to just get me in the worst position. So imagine getting ready for work, right? And now you got to move your clothes and everything else like that. These niggas was trying to put me in a position where I was, I lost my job. I didn't have nowhere to stay. And they, they made the perfect plan, you feel me? And long story short, I always kept the arsenal. So basically, long story short, I grabbed the things that I could grab, and I put some of it in a storage unit. Went to work on that day regardless. Trooper, nigga. <laughs> the first trooper of his kind. I still went to work. Did what I had to do. I don't even know how I came out that situation. When I say I don't know, <laughs> I don't know where, where I slept that night. I don't even know how I came. I didn't go home. I didn't go back to my mom's square. I couldn't. And mind you, it was a few months after I left there. So I was like, damn, where the fuck do I go? Like, I didn't know how. I didn't know. What did I do? What did I do? That shit was crazy. Like, I didn't go to no homeless shelter neither. I don't even know where I went. <laughs> but long story short, most of the people, you see today, people are trying to get me in that position, but God has already get, uh, delivered me out of that position. People need to understand these things. Like, y'all niggas need to stop acting like, yo, I, like the things that you wishing upon me, I, I've, I've been through it several, several times. You feel me? That's one thing that they need to understand. Like, yo, a nigga been through that shit several, several times before. You don't understand that people that I grew up with since we was young. Shit. The shit that we did together. And they did that to me. And you a total stranger. You feel me? What makes you think I'm not on guard about these kind of things? I don't put my trust in people easily. The only way they could have got me like that because it was the trust that I let down for them. You feel me? But long story short, I don't even know how I got out of that situation. Then the second time when I moved back home was when my brother went to jail, right? My brother went to jail for some bullshit. They said he did something. Da -da -da. And I mean, I'm going to get into what they said he did. So he went to jail. My mom, uh, my mom called me and let me know. Da -da -da -da. Um, um, around that time, I had my own room. Well, my mom told me that he went to jail, right? So I had my own room, but I did not have a job. <laughs> that shit crazy, I know. 
but I had money in my pocket as usual. Always had some kind of some kind of income I'm working with. God's God God again. Look at God working. You feel me? So I'm like, fuck. This was pre pre uh Washington Heights. That's when I used to live in Washington Heights. I had um a job and everything else in Washington Heights. Actually, nah see. After that happened, um I went straight to my cousin's house. Boom. Yes, I went straight to my cousin's house. My cousin, my cousin. I, uh, I didn't even live with my cousin for that long. I probably stayed there for like a week. Then I went down the block and got um. I got. I went to uh, one of my Spanish local spots and got me a room because usually that's that's my always plan B. Because in New York City, you can always go to these offices. It's all around the city, and you can rent out. You you can just pay first month first uh, month rent and all that stuff, and you can get a room. It's basically similar to what i got right now but you know you, this one you got your own bathroom your own room your own film you got a, a, a couple of your own stuff going on so it's quite different but in new york said it was much easier for you to get a room and just call it a day bomb like that so i still i went to my cousin's place because that office was like one block away from my cousin's place so i went back into harlem so i went to that office and with that office, then you could get a room the same day and move in the same day, as long as you have the money. And thank God I had the money, you feel me? So I had the money, bum. Thank God I didn't give all my money away to some people who wasn't even using the money to pay rent anyway. You was a $5,000 behind on rent. Boy, listen, even if I, I couldn't have, I don't, the rent was only, the rent back then, when I was paying, it was only $200 a month. <laughs> like so my shit was only two hundred dollars a month and they haven't paid a rent in so long their rent for they have four rooms i hate to tell your business but i gotta tell the truth they have four rooms and the rent was only five hundred dollars a month so you have four rooms and you got me paying two hundred dollars a month you have me already overpaying already and yeah you still not paying you still not even with my two hundred dollars a month all you all you got to do between you and the other nigga was paid 150 each but they couldn't do that because the rent was so back and overdue it's like five thousand dollars that means that you didn't pay the rent for a very very long 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 time you feel me you were just barely paying and barely getting by you feel me so that's where the problem was that with me and them bond. i moved out i moved out of there went straight to uh, went straight to harlem then from harlem i found a room in washington heights you feel me in washington heights you feel me Remind me, I'm, every place that I went through, the same thing was happening, but I did not have idea of what was going on. You feel me? I didn't know what was going on. So, all this other shit that they're talking about, don't listen to them. I'm telling you the story right now. Now I went to Washington Heights. I went to Washington Heights. You already know, if you're from New York City, Washington Heights is like straight Hispanic Central. You feel me? They don't even like my kind over there. But yeah, we all look the same. But that's another story. So I'm in Washington Heights. I'm sticking out like a sore thumb. They knew I wasn't from, <laughs> but I had a room over there. You feel me? I was living with a family over there, but I had a room within that building itself. So I'm going back and forth, trying to manage with a part-time job. And at that time, I was already, I already started the 401k then back then too. But I was putting so much money away and I didn't know how to like minimize or decrease the amount of money i'm putting away so it, <laughs> it shit was confusing to me so i'm literally coming home with basically nothing at all and i'm putting it towards the rent and everything else like that so i was basically going through tough times and i didn't even have to because <laughs> i'm putting so much money away it's like it's retarded like i didn't know how to undo it and i had a i still have that problem today today it's like I hate to ask people for help for things that I know I should know how to do. So no matter how long it takes, I'm going to try to figure it out. And that's my fucking problem. That's probably my only sin is that I'm hard-headed when it comes to asking for help. That's that's the truth because I want to be able to do it myself. That's the whole situation. That was a situation too. Well, basically, long story short, I'm going to get there too. Um, so I'm in Washington Heights. I stayed there for a little bit. Um... I had a problem with the lady. The lady kept on coming in my room while I'm sleeping. One time, I wake up to her 
trying to open the door and come into my room. And I'm like, yo, this lady got a whole husband and shit like that. But that's another story. She probably going to lie. But I'm just telling y'all niggas the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. You feel me? Like this bitch. <laughs> and at that time, this was this. This is the reason why I started uh, wearing extra pants and tie, tying my pants very tight. Because I'm like, yo. Like, I used to sleep naked. Like, that's how I felt comfortable at that time sleeping naked. I didn't care where I was. I would just go to sleep butt naked. I didn't even really want to wear my drawers or nothing like that. I just felt comfortable like that because it was so hot in that place, too. And I was right next to the kitchen, and there was only one window, and I was in the back of the building, so I didn't really have that much wind coming through. So, long story short, I went time, I mean, I called several times, several less than two. I'm not even going to say several, a couple of times. Yeah, she, she tried to come in my room, bro. Like, she was like, then after that, the second time when I called her again, I'm like, damn, like, I thought you said you didn't have a key to my room. And she was like, no, no, I thought you wasn't home. And I'm like, come on, man. Like, then I had to, I had to look at her sideways. Then she started looking at me in a way, like, like, in a sexual kind of way. And I'm like, uh. Like, you feel me? Like, I don't know. Like, you feel me? You got a hu husband be coming over. And it's like, it felt weird. And she was like my mom's age. So I'm like, I don't know about this. Then we was having an issue with the rent and everything else, too, at that point in time, too. But at the same time, I did what I had to do. I figured out how to minimize how much money I was putting away. And I ended up finding that I was putting too much money away. So I ended up borrowing for myself like I usually do. I had a lot of money at that time, so it gave me the chance to pay her what I needed to pay her and move out because I just felt uncomfortable with that situation. Now, once again, here I am going back and forth, hotel rooms, doing the whole hotel life. Like I came to Cali doing again, shit crazy. I can't make up that lot, bro. So here I am making, um, to making. Going from room to, uh, going from uh, hotel room to hotel room, living that kind of life and shit like that. Bum. Now, I remind you, during that process, through the evictions and everything else like that, I'm losing clothes. Like, I'm constantly have to buy new clothes. So that's why I don't have a lot of luggage on me and everything else like that. So during that time period, I didn't really, uh, I was doing hotel to hotel. And I'm like, you know, I'm spending too much money. Then one, once upon a time, I'm in a room. Um, I end up getting another room. I'm in a room, and my mom called me and told me, hey, your brother got arrested, da 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 He went to jail, and um, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, that's crazy, and everything else like that. So I waited, like, um, a few months. Um, a few months. Then I went into the homeless shelter and everything else like that, because I still didn't have a job, but I had a room. That's when we, I'm coming back to that side. So I still didn't have a job, but I had a room and I was still paying out of my pocket. And I'm like, this shit don't even make sense. Like, you feel me? Because I was trying, I was looking for a job, but it was like, it was very hard to find. So I went straight to the homeless shelter, bomb. So when I went into the homeless shelter, I ended up finding the job. Now I'm working from the homeless shelter to do this. And the homeless shelter is not trying to help me because they said, because they thinking because my reputation, I didn't even know because the lady was telling me that I'm just using this place as a revolving door. You got money and this, that, and the third, and you just using us just to get an apartment so the city can pay. I'm like, yeah, what the hell is all this animosity coming from? This person doesn't even know me from a hole in the wall. But I remind you, this was a black lady at that time too. So I'm going to give you a rundown of what's going on. I lived when, when I was in Harlem and everything else like that. That was black around that first apartment. When I came to Washington Heights, Spanish, when I came to um, the homeless shelter and everything else, it was a mixture of black and white. The first homeless shelter was a mixture of black and white. I was transferred to another homeless shelter, and that was just straight black and Hispanics. You feel me? So that being said, you feel me? I'm going through the same thing that I'm going through right now. The same thing. The same thing. Ain't shit changed. If anything, y'all niggas... If anything, Cali, they they just getting a, a new start, and they they gonna get to where they need to get to. You feel me? The only difference is that it's more white people now, so everybody's having a problem with it. It's like, oh, uh, you left your people, nigga. Shut the fuck up. Because when I was around my own people, this shit was happening. So what are we talking about? You feel me? That's one thing I do not like about people being a hypocrite. You feel me? Everybody know when I was even with my family, my friends, unknown people. 
people that I did not know and known and people that I did know, the same shit was happening. So what the fuck is y'all niggas talking about when it comes to white people? All of a sudden, it's a problem. Like, come on, man. Like, I'm tired of these people always trying to make it seem like it's this racial thing and we are just being hypocrites. We are like, we need to stop the bullshit, my nigga. When I had my own people, my own family, my own friends that I grew up with, guess what? The same shit was happening. But since it's not dumb and control now, all of a sudden they want to make this, oh, you, how can you leave your family in danger? And I'm like, in danger? Nigga, I was in danger. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Nigga, I was sleeping with my own baby mom's gonna try to live with her, try to kill me. Nigga, what the fuck is y'all niggas talking about? You feel me? Like, I had other topics to talk about, but I'm like, this is more important. Why don't I talk about the reason why I'm independent? The reason why I am the way I am? Because I've tried over and over and over to be the person that I'm supposed to be. But when you around people who do not like you, guess what? There's nothing you can do about it. You cannot buy people to like you. It doesn't matter how much money you spend. It shouldn't even be based on money. You feel me? It shouldn't have to be based on money. It shouldn't have to be based on what can you do for me. It should be just unconditional love. But that's, that does not exist. That's just a, a, a fantasy. It's an illusion that never exists. You feel me? So now they're talking about new devil. Now you 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 gonna rip what you sow. I'm like, man, y'all niggas is playing boogie boogie man with somebody else, cause this shit ain't got nothing to do with me. Now this has everything to do with your insecurity. You feel me? Let's be for real, my nigga. All of a sudden, cause it's like a, a new, whole new group of people. We ain't gonna put a color on them. It's just a new group of people. Now y'all mad cause y'all not in control of the situation. Cause they want to be the one that, that's able to end it. They want to end me by their people, by their hands. So not that you in control, somebody else is in control and controlling these things. You mad because yeah, I'm like, yo, this shit is out of control. But anyway, what was that in the story? So my mom said that my brother, that I jail, that I saw. She didn't tell me to come on. She was just telling me that this was what was going on. So remind you, I went to my cousin's house for a week and I got a room. But as I was moving from room to room, the trouble was following me around without me even even knowing. Now I had to move to two different homes of apartments. Remind you, you can't move to another. This nigga's always on my dick. <laughs> like, you gotta let it go, bro. You gotta let it go. He's a weirdo. Niggas be having too much muscles to be gay. You feel me? <laughs> that strength should have told you snap out of it. Like, it should have gave you some mind control. Anyway, you're not part of the story. <laughs> anyway, mom, y'all be moving from room to room, trying to get my footing together and everything. I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to get ahead of them, ahead in life. But these people are literally trying to hold me back. They following them around. They follow me around without even me knowing. You feel me? They following me around through all these lineages. They just following me around. They like even when I, I had job interviews and these people knew that my phone was tapped. So I get to the job interview and people already knew me before I even got there. It was crazy, my nigga. I'm telling y'all niggas like I'm like yo, y'all niggas think this shit is a joke. Like I was being stalked. Like so now I'm out here. They telling me because some they got a few white people involved. They don't like the idea of white. They don't. They don't have full control of what's going on, whether that's, uh, whether that's Spanish or that's uh, my family or whether that's black or whether that's whatever in the culture they are. They just don't have full control of what's going on, so they telling me otherwise. I'm like, hey, I don't want to hear y'all niggas because when I was in y'all control, y'all niggas didn't do nothing good for me. You feel me? As a matter of fact, the same thing that's happening to me now is, was the same thing that was happening there. So y'all was the one who was telling them anything else. You feel me? Build me like fuck y'all niggas talking about. You feel me? Y'all niggas make me sick, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like the other reason, nigga, fuck is you niggas talking about? Feel me? I was doing everything in my power to make it work over there. You dig? Like, but anyway, I'm going to job interview and people already know who I was. Now, I remind you, I was still getting those jobs, but it was like it was very difficult to work underneath those conditions because it's like. I had to put in 200% of what everybody else was putting in. It was jobs that I was paying out of my pocket just to make sure that it worked. I'm trying to do some trade shit. I'm trying to sit behind a computer. I'm like, this shit ain't even me, my nigga. But yet, I'm putting in money just to make some money out. You feel me? These are the lengths that I had to go. 
And this was way before Amazon even came into play, you feel me? And I've been on Amazon for six years, so we talking beyond 10 years plus, you feel me? So just imagine what was going on before Amazon came into play. Here I am fighting for, fighting for my own, you feel me? Ain't nobody else was helping me out. Don't let these niggas fool you, man. I was doing this shit on my own, my nigga. Even when I came out here, I had to use my own money. So I want to hear niggas. Amazon ain't paid for my trip. I paid for my own trip. <laughs> Fuck niggas. Like, y'all niggas, like, niggas really, like, y'all got to be out your monkey mind, yo. For real, for real. You feel me? I know they, they like to tell the story and they, they, they be forgetting about the things that I'm enduring. They just mad. They didn't have, like, y'all niggas had all that control. I was, the apartment, I'm, all right, let me just get back to the story, you feel me? Because I'll be riffing and going off, you feel me? I'll be riffing and going off for no apparent reasons. So, basically, how did I go? Oh, yeah, I went back. I was in the shelter, da 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 Then um, I told my cousin about where I was at. Then my cousin told my dad. Then my dad called those people and told them he has a family. He don't need to be there, which actually made them... We, which which actually made them more, um, cause mind they was already telling me that I was using them, so that made them more fucking furious about the whole situation. I'm like, that's crazy. Here I am trying to do this shit on my own, and every other year I have to deal with people talk like these things was going on without even me knowing. I don't even know the full extent of it. So every other year I'm finding little by little why people are trying to damage my reputation while I'm at it, feel me? So it hasn't been easy. That, that, that's all, it hasn't been easy. I said, it hasn't been easy. Busy, it hasn't been easy, busy. <laughs> it hasn't been easy, feel me? So basically, they they end up kicking me out. They was like, oh, we just using as a revolving door. Once my father called and said what he said, these motherfuckers, how you get kicked out of homeless shelter, bro? Like, niggas dead tried to, they kicked me out, they suspended me for some bullshit. And I'm like, what the fuck? Nah, you even getting kicked out of homeless shelter because people are calling in telling them that you don't belong there, that you, that you have a family, which confirms to them that tells the, the lie that they was told that I'm just using them as a revolving door. Remind you, these people are working together and everything. I'm not saying that my father was involved. I'm just saying that they cons this conspiracy. They, they try to make it so hard for me to even evolve in any form or shape, feel me? They try. Every job I went to, everything that I tried to do, the gym that I was going through, people that I was coming across was already put in my path to befriend me, you feel me? When I was, when I was, when I was in that uh, time period, I had people coming in my way trying to befriend me and shit. Just trying to befriend me. And this is the, I had girls warning me, like, yo, watch out for this nigga. He's just there to befriend you. And at first, I thought they was talking about me. And I'm like, what the fuck? I don't have... Because I was so paranoid. I didn't know what was going on. I'm thinking... <laughs> I'm thinking that, nah, they're talking about me. But I, I didn't know that they was giving me advice. Like, yo, watch out for this person. I thought they was telling him to watch out for me. And sometimes I, w I had had people who was trying to help me, but... It's like, you can't try to help somebody without telling them the whole totality of what's going on, you feel me? Now they, you feel me? Like, y'all niggas trying to help somebody, y'all trying to help me by not telling me the whole story. So I'm going back and telling these people, like, yo, this, this person think that I'm trying to befriend you. And I'm going back to the enemy and telling the enemy, like, yo, I'm not trying to befriend you. I'm being a good person. In my mind, being a good person, trying to break it down, like, yo. That's not even me, my nigga. Like, that's not even my character. But that's his character. And I'm talking to him about him. Nah, in his mind, he's getting mad. He's like, yo, who said it? I'm like, nah, I ain't even trying. You know what I mean? And this has been going on in my life for a very long time by people who were trying to help me. And later on, started to hate me because they did. Like, you can't try to help me without letting me know the whole content of what's going on. But as time went on, gradually, remember, they gave me fragments of the truth. And people will try to help help you without even try without having a conversation with you. They they say to you indirectly. I didn't understand what was going on. So anytime, any, anyway, man. What was that? So I'm in the shelter. I, oh, then my father called that. They kicked me out the shelter. Bomb. Now I'm like, fuck. What the fuck? <laughs>
<laughs> I'm like, damn, yo, like this shit fucked up. So my pops talking about I should come stay with him and everything else like that. And around that time, my brother was still in jail, and I was like, mm, I don't know. Feel me? I really didn't know where to stay at that point because I was caught up in a dilemma. So my my pops, so I went back into Harlem. I went back into Harlem to my cousin's house. Again, now I'm about to go do another room. I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to do another room since I got a job now. Because around the time I had a job now, you feel me? And this was my first years of being in Amazon. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to have a job now. I can go back out there. I don't need to. Remind you, me going back to my mom's house was not a result. Me living with my father was not something I wanted to do at all. Like, I'm, I'm not going back. Hell no, I'm not going back. You feel me? Remind you, these things was happening without me even knowing you feel me so my fa- my father was like um, it's better for you da, 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 so you can just get back on your feet da, da, da. I was trying I'm being a good boy I'm like ah, fuck it let me listen da, da, da. and that time my mom was coming back from Africa she went to Africa she was coming back from Africa so I'm like you know what it's better for me to go stay with my mom and my father was like okay so I went then that's how I ended up in my mom's crib and when I got to my mom's house, my mom was like, all right, um, remind me, I'm just coming out the homeless. Remind you, I got suspended out the homeless shelter. I lived with my cousin for like probably two days. My mom was like, all right, you know, when you come out, you still got to help me out and everything else like that. I'm like, all right, cool. This is how much money I'm going to give you per week, which is like, you know, 100 and change. It would be the same amount of money I'll be paying if I had a room anyway. So I'm like, all right, it makes sense for me to have a room to pay my mom that money in the room instead of a total stranger lady trying to walk in my room and try to probably grab on my wee-wee and all that shit she wanted to do. Fucking freak. <laughs> you feel me? That's just the truth. I'm not even trying to make this shit up. This is all true, by the way. So I'm like, I bum. So I went in my mom's house. I was paying the same amount of money that I would pay for a room in a room, and I just came out the homeless shelter. Da, da, da. So I'm like, I fuck it. I'm just do what I got to do. Then I'm going to save up and leave. Da, da, da. So... I was just on my grind. I was working hard, da da da, paying her what I needed to pay. Her. Long story short, I fucked up. Ended up meeting my baby mom. You feel me? That was a fucked up situation, but it's a it's a situation that happens. So it, I can't cry over spoiled milk. You feel me? End up she talking about she pregnant, this, that, and the third. I didn't believe him. Like, nah, that's not my baby, da da da. So um, we went to the hospital the day she was supposed to have the baby. Um, I went there with the intention. I'm like, I am not signing no birth certificate. That was just my mentality. I'm not signing that bullshit. Like, I need a DNA test. Da, da, da. My mom said, no. You don't, don't do that. She's going to be under a lot of stress having that baby. Just in case it's your brave baby, don't bring those up. While she's pushing out the baby, it could affect the baby. I'm like, I got to listen to my mom. Mom, again, being a good boy. So... I allow the process to take place. Then my mom then after the baby was born and everything else like that, my mom seen the baby. She was like, You better not ask for a little DNA. You I'm your mother and I know that baby's yours. <laughs> I should have been watching the Maury more. Not every just because the baby looked like you, she's like, I know you had the same kind of what she said, the same kind of ears and the toe and whatever she was saying. So I'm like, fuck, man, this lady said this baby, man. She was so convincing. So I fuck, I end up signing this, this, that, and the third. Sign a baby certificate. Mom, now I'm I'm trying to help my baby mom's out, but she hates me because of this whole situation, the whole the way the whole thing took place and how we not together and everything else like that. So it's like, she was like, well, I had a shitty baby. Uh, not shitty baby. She said she had, had had a baby, shitty baby transaction because I wasn't there when she was pregnant. And this that I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Like you, you are not an easy person to communicate with. Fuck, nigga, you want what you want me to do? Like you are very hard to deal with. Like basically, that's what I was telling. Her. I'm like, you are the difficult person to deal with. I can't even, I can't even sleep next to you without me worrying about my health. Like fuck out of here, bitch. Like. Philly, and that was a real concern, like me sleeping next to her. And it's like she was doing the same things too. So I'm like, fuck out of here. Like, you know what I mean? Nah, look at this, man. 
I'm going through the same thing. Even with her, I'm worrying about what she, what the people, what they're doing to me right now. I'm worried about what she was doing to me. You feel me? You feel me? Like I'm worrying about that. Lee dig like now. I'm worrying about all these stuff. That's why I'm like, yo, most of the things that I went through, I didn't even know I was going through. Even at the beginning of Amazon, I didn't know oh, this fat nigga. Like, why this nigga? Like, I don't understand. Like, anyway, even at the beginning of Amazon, I didn't know. I didn't even know I was going through the things that I was going through. You feel me? I had people infiltrating, just getting jobs over there just to get a job over there. You feel me? Just so they can be next to you and just to hate on you so you can lose your job. You feel me? Like, shit like that. Like, people always doing things just to do things. You feel me? For cloud, I don't know what they're doing it for. But, yeah, people just be doing shit just for cloud. I don't know what they be doing that shit for. Like, well, you can't give me energy like I've always said. Anyway, but. The only reason why I'm cut the shit short because I'm about to go in. I'll be talking for almost an hour. The same thing I'm going through in Cali, I've been going through it. The only reason why people are even talking about it and the way they're talking about it because it has to do with white people. And that's what I've come to understand. When Hispanic was doing it dramatically, everybody know that. Like, they was wild and nobody was saying nothing. Even when I left my mom's last place, they was the ones doing it. Nobody was saying nothing about that. Before that, when the blacks was doing it, nobody was saying nothing about that. Know what I mean? But now that white people ain't uh, doing it, now everybody got a fucking problem with it. They seen y'all niggas doing it to your own, so what the fuck y'all niggas got a problem with it now? You feel me? I got to call it out like the way I see it. You feel me? Like, y'all niggas is embarrassing. You feel me? Y'all embarrass me. Plain and simple. You dig? And it's kind of funny how things work out. Because if you was there with me in the beginning, the shit, the, the attack wasn't even on them. When I was leaving, they was the victims of the attack now. So that should, things just, be careful what you do to others. You feel me? You just got to be careful. Like, y'all niggas be, y'all created destruction, then get mad because, it doesn't work in y'all favor, type shit like that. And it's still going on with this idiotic behavior. Like, I'm going to be the one that I am the, we going to be the one. And I'm like, yo, y'all niggas got to take it easy, man. You feel me? Y'all got y'all to gotta, like, y'all gotta stop with the whole cutting of the air hair, the punching of the face, and everything else like that. Who you think started all this bullshit? But just because another group of people... Yeah, of course, they was, they was doing the same thing I was in New York when I was in Jersey and everything else like that. But who was in control of all this behavior? Y'all was. Y'all started it. <laughs> Y'all started it. This was, pre, this was before Amazon. Remind you, I wouldn't have to have to go into Jersey if it wasn't for Amazon anyway. So if they want to trace it back to that, guess what? Before Amazon. This was before me even before before Home Depot. Like, come on, man. That was a long time. Check my resume. You might see the dates on it when I started those dates. You feel me? So, I'm not trying to hear niggas talk, man. Niggas is hypocrites. They're full of shit. And I got to call them out. I just got to call it out. This, this is what I call a hypocrite. You feel me? This is because they're not in charge. They mad about the situation at hand. That's all. They are hypocrites. I mean, I got to call it. We are all hypocrites because we jump in and out of it without even knowing. That wouldn't constantly describe you as a hypocrite. A hypocrite is someone who knowingly does it. If you unknowingly doing it, then you're not a hypocrite. In my book, you're still a hypocrite because you're supposed to monitor these things. But if you unknowingly doing it, then it's okay. You know what I mean? Your sins are forgiven. But if you don't, then you need to fix that. But if you do, then you need to fix that. Anyway, man, I'm about to go in. Another work day. You know how that go. There was a lot of things I could have spoke about, but I feel like this was very important. You feel me? Because they might, they might tell you, oh, how can you live your family? I'm like, you're my family. Well, nigga, my family. They want, like, what the fuck, nigga? Like, how can you leave your friends? I'm like, what are you talking about? These are saying, nigga, what the hell? Like, I'm not saying all of my family, but I'm just saying, I mean, let's just call it for what it is, my nigga. Like, niggas make it feel like I'm the devil or something. I'm like, that's crazy. Like, y'all niggas acting like y'all don't know what was going on when I was there. 
like, that shit be killing me, my nigga. <laughs> like, niggas knew what was going on when I was there, man. We seen it. We seen the movies. We seen it all. Like, yo, shout out to everybody that was on my side. I tried to help me out, but I didn't know. And I end up, you know, it was a lot of people that tried to help me out. I didn't know. I end up, you know, not knowing because you, you was trying to help me out without telling me the whole story. It's like, this shit don't work like that. You know what I mean? You tell me fragments of the truth and I'm thinking that you're going against me. So I'm telling the person who's actually trying to hurt me then they're using that against me. So it's like, you got to be careful on these things. You feel me? It is not my fault, man. Fuck out of here, man. But it is what it is, man. It is what it is. You feel me? Don't get mad at me because I'm telling my side of the story now. You know what I mean? When I was around in the city and I was there for a very long time and it's been happening for that many years. We're talking about 12 years plus. And, um, None of this shit was raised up when I was there, but now y'all telling these four stories. It's very uncalled for. Anyway, I'm going, man. I said that five minutes ago, and I can tell that shit can't run still. And I got people out here running and grabbing my balls and everything. These niggas is freaks. <laughs> they are freaks. But due to the whole the Amazon thing and everything else like that, I just felt like it was a business. It was an institute. Where you don't do shit like that. You like you were supposed to do that shit with some kind of profession. But even them, even them, my job, you feel me? They um they contributed to it. You feel me? They should have like you feel me? Same things you just don't do. As a, a place where you have rules and policy and everything else like that. You just don't do these things. But anyway, man. You can carry a piece of box all you want. I probably order one today, too, just to shit on niggas. All right, one.